Hey mask nerds, welcome back to another mask review video. I'm Aaron, I've been using my background in aerosol science and mechanical engineering to test and evaluate what I think are the best masks. I use real scientific grade instruments in my laboratory, aka my bathroom, I need a small room to do it. I've been on the hunt and I always present my data, but like you, I took the summer off because I got vaccinated, we weren't worried about masks, but Delta has come along and psh, smacked us all and we're back into it. So today's video is all about 11 and under. Why? Because they can't get vaccinated. 12 and older, I have videos that cover adult, medium and small, but most importantly, go get vaccinated. If you're 11 and under, that's what we're gonna talk about today. Now, this is a primer for parents that might be new to these concepts of better masks because we've kind of skipped a couple generations of masks. My opinion, we could have gone best already, but we'll just talk about what good, better, and best are. But first, what are the three most important aspects of a mask? Well, the first, the three most important aspects of a mask are fit, filtration. Filtration is the most important. We need a mask, like this surgical mask, has the material in it that captures particles. I like to call our technology, right, this melt blown in here that does that. But there's also other important aspects, like fit. Now the surgical mask might have the filtration, but it clearly does not have the fit. You can see that when I breathe, air can go around the mask and not through the mask. So when we talk about what we need, we need filtration, we need fit, and we need comfort, all day comfort, because the mask you don't wear is one that doesn't work. So when we talk about surgical masks, they touch your mouth, they suck into your mouth. Uh, if you wear a mask that are really tight or hard to breathe in, those become difficult to wear all day. And so I've been on the hunt for what is the best in all three of those categories. So when you talk about masks, there's, I consider three good categories. There's good, better, and best. Good, in my opinion, are gonna be your base model masks. Now, cloth masks, in my opinion, is not suitable enough. At minimum, maybe an F3502 approved mask, but they are really hard to find. This is the cloth mask standard that was, eh, pretty weak sauce of a standard. Not great. Uh, and in general, that's the, I wouldn't even argue that's good. That's like, you probably should be doing better than that. Now, a lot of people say, hey, cloth mask, but can I make it better by sticking a filter insert into it? And the answer is no. The better masks we talk about have edge to edge filters. So this exact, this mask here and the silver test port is added by me for the experiment. When I wore this without the filter, I got about 70% protection. My test method does slightly overestimate on the low end like that, but in general, pretty close. I put the filter in this mask, which does not go edge to edge. It's just about here. I went from 70% to 63%. Oh, strange. Yeah, it actually made it worse because that fit's not great on this mask, even though I tried my best because just the design isn't good enough. And when I put that filter media to that, it makes it harder to breathe in, more air goes around it, and I actually reduce my protection. So when we start talking about better masks, we talk about edge to edge filter media. So this is a VOG mask. I tested, I got about 90% filtration. My test air saw my face, uh, which is pretty good. Again, they feature filter media that goes to edge to edge. And, but why are they not the best masks? Well, one, I am not, these masks don't fit my face that great. And I think in general, the fit of these design masks isn't as good as some of the other masks we'll talk about. Second issue, they're expensive. And third issue is, the, there's claims of reusability of these masks and I rarely see the published data. Now there are some good masks out there that do publish the data about that. The Enro mask does have some published data on their website. I've ordered one to test it. Others like Happy Mask, I see no. If you claim reusability, you, there better be some data to back that up. And I'm really disappointed that this far in the pandemic, we have companies claiming reusability with no reference data to go with that. We should be expecting more from our mask manufacturers. And if you've been in the game for a year and a half, you've had plenty of time to go get the data. There's plenty of companies that can test it. Uh, so to me, it's no excuse. These are not my favorite favorite for a few reasons. They're expensive. They Pressure drops not much better. Face this isn't better. Uh, and the question of reusability, again, maybe they are, maybe they're not. No one has any published data on that. So what is the best mask in my opinion? In my, best, my opinion, the best masks are masks that have regulatory standards applied to them. So we'll talk about those. These often are called KN95s, N95s, KF94s, FFP2. Okay, that's a lot of terms. What the heck are they? Well, when we talk about these masks, I'm gonna use a kid mask in all the videos today from here on out, they're all kid masks just for fun because it's fun to look at the adult wear a little kid's mask. So this is an example of that. This is a KF94, it's printed. These feature really high performing media. When you look at the media level test, we're talking like 99 plus percent filtration efficiency, even though the standard may only require 95% or something like that, but they far exceed the standard, really high end media. They have the fit. Now this is a kid's mask and adult, and it actually, I tested these uh, and they performed really well, even on an adult face. No, okay, it's, it's kind of funny for me to wear a kid's mask, but these masks also feature the fit. They have a design that seals against your face to help prevent leakage. Now, it doesn't guarantee simply buying this mask and putting it on your face, you get that level, but if you can, if you can drive to a high fit, you get high protection because you got that filtration. And I argue all day comfort. Now, one thing you might notice is my voice did not change. When you, if you paid attention when I had that cloth mask on talking, yeah, it suddenly muffled voice. This mask, this style of mask keeps it away from your face so you can talk and it's not sucking against your mouth. So these are what I think are the best masks. Now, you showed me, say a bunch of numbers, KN95, 
K N95, what are, what are all these numbers? Okay, the real breakdown is pretty simple. When we talk about mass, there's four primary standards. There's the US N95 standard, a NIOSH N95. Now it is both a test standard and a regulatory system. So one, you test against a NIOSH an N95, which is really the 42 CFR 84 test. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but there's a regulatory agency behind it. That regulatory agency is NIOSH and they test and evaluate the quality. And so not only do you have a good test standard, but you have someone checking the work of the people. And so you can just buy a mask. You don't have to worry, is this legit? Okay. That's also prevalent in other test standards. And my favorite test standards for general population mass is the KF94. It's a South Korean standard, same thing. They have a test standard and they have a regulatory agency, in this case, the Korean FDA. So if you're a KF94 manufacturer, you have to have a presence in South Korea, you have to have a quality system, you have to have all these tests, you present it to the Korean FDA, they audit and test samples, and actually they sue companies that make underperforming masks. They haven't done it. So you have test standard and regulatory agency. Now, FFP2 is the same, test standard FFP2, and then they have a regulatory agency there uh, via the European Union. Now, KN95 is a little unique. It's a test standard, but there's no regulatory agency. So that's why we're seeing when you hear about KN95s might be fake is because they just have a test standard. Anyone can say and stamp on KN95, no one's really checking the work, the regulatory agency there. And normally we would have pathways about that, which is that you would sue a company, but it becomes really hard when they're just tiny companies that pop up on Amazon, sell some stuff, and then just disappear overnight. So this is the issue. Doesn't mean that all K95s are bad. In fact, K95s can be good, and we'll have some in the video, but you just can't always trust the suppliers. KF94s, they rock it out of the park. It's a general mass standard. Now, the question you might ask is, why can't I just buy some NIOSH N95s? US made? Awesome. Let's just do that for kids. Well, it's the O in NIOSH, National Institute of Occupational health and safety. The occupational means workers and kids should not be working, especially 11 and under, and they should dang well not be working where they need PPE. Like, yeah, clearly that's not the case. So NIOSH has no interest in legislating and reg regulating kids' mass. What this highlights is you need what's called a general population mass standard. And that's what the KF94. And in my opinion, the way to do mass standards is exactly what the KF94 is. They have kids' mass all the way to, they tiny toddler mass all the way to adult mass because they have a good regulatory test, a good test standard, and they have a regulatory group that's making sure they're good. In South Korea, you just go to a Korean grocery store or you could go to your pharmacy and they would have a row of all these KF94s and just by eating KF94, you know they're safe and you just try them on, figure out which one fit you best, which one you like the best and then you just buy them for like 80 cents, right? So we somehow have still not done that here. We don't have a US-based um, general population mass standard, and I think that is absolutely something we need. If there's any action that should come out of this pandemic is we need a general population mass standard, not just an occupational standard because it creates really specific needs, which where well, you may hear, oh, you can't wear an N95 unless you're fitted, which is BS. Like it creates these real confusions and we should have a general population mass standard. Okay. All right, let's jump into the mask review portion of this today. So there's actually a Google Drive link below with a summary table of all of these masks for different sizes and pressure up and filter and type. And I'll talk a little bit what those things are for parents that are kind of new to this. Uh, but in general, that's where you're gonna find that. Now, again, I have no financial obligation to any of these mask manufacturers, testers. Either I paid for these masks or they sent them to me. But again, I take no payment. I don't monetize this channel. I don't make any money on this. My goal is just to find the best mask, help people help get this pandemic over so I can get back to what I really enjoy, which is spending time with my family and riding bikes. All right, so uh, almost all those masks you're gonna see are KF94 and K95s. Now, I'm gonna make the pitch for you why I like these a lot. These masks are comfortable. I wear them myself. And here's the kicker. Most people think these are hard to breathe in because they have really high filtration efficiency. But in fact, that's not the case. They're actually usually easier to breathe than, than the cloth mass or even some of the better mass like Vogue mass have it. They actually really super breathable. So uh, the pressure drop data kind of shows that the lower it is, the better it is, but in general, they're still better on average than a cloth mass. So don't get hung up on that too much. Um, now you're gonna see two standards, KF94, which I talked before, and the KN95 uh, standard. So again, those are the, the test standard that was applied to them. And then I'm just kind of verifying them with my test setup. And you're also gonna see two styles. This is called the boat style. I really think this is the best standard. It fits like 85, 90% of face as well, if you can get the right sizing. Um, and they're really nice because they don't touch your face. And when you wear them, uh, they don't muffle your speech, all those good things. Now, Again, that leaves 15% of people that they don't work well, and I like a bifold style. Now, I'm a big fan of the KN bifold. KN bifold has a taper and a taper. It's a little bit better design. Um, again, I pick some manufacturers that I test that I think the data looks good on, uh, that I think are legit suppliers. That, so that, but there's also a Korean bifold. Now, this is actually a US one, but it's a good example because it has the same shape as it, and it's a cool color. So it's a good example demo. It has a taper and then a hook. And the taper and hook just means they're very much more face specific. So you'll have to spend a little bit more time making sure that they fit tightly to the face. And I'll talk about how to do a fit check. Now, one of the things you're also gonna see is pressure drop. When we talked about when they're breathability. Well, pressure drop dries that all day comfort. And so you're gonna see a column over there for pressure drop. Lower is better. Pressure drop means the resistance of airflow through the mask. So a higher number means it's harder to get through the mask. So we want low number 
numbers more breathable. My method isn't great. I use my big adult lungs and my big adult face to do this test. And so a mask that's this big and a mask that's this big, which are very two different size masks, are gonna perform differently just because there's more filter media. So keep the, keep the comparison within age ranges. And if they're really close numbers together, my result my method is not that great at resolving small differences, but if it's 0.2 and 0.6, okay, there's definitely a difference there. All right, next thing is we gotta talk about fit. Mass only work, so they have the good media, I got that, but I can't guarantee a fit. That's the big question. So I can show you a pressure drop and I can show you a filtration data, but I can't guarantee a fit. It's up to you to make sure you find a mask that fits. And I'm gonna give you some tips about how to fit a mask. So one of the things that you wanna do is when you're wearing a mask is we have to think about leakage and you can usually feel a leakage and you know again this is going to get you better fit it doesn't guarantee that you're going to get 99.9% .9 protection in fact really you can only do that with a quantitative fit test but we can get much much better into the 90s plus with just using the leak check in my opinion okay so the leak check works very simply what you do is when you wear the mask what you can do is create a leak by slowly pulling the mask away from your face and you'll start to feel the sensitivity of like sensation of a jet of air coming thing so your goal is just as you breathe just adjust the leak to find the smallest one you can. You're like, oh, yeah, I definitely I can, I can feel that leak. And then what you wanna do while you're wearing the mask without doing it, see if you feel that anywhere else. In this case, I feel it right here. I feel a jet of air shooting right across my nose bridge because this mask is just too small for my face. So what you can do is you can do something like this and just take your hands and seal the mask and with your nose wire like this to tighten it up. And then you can feel if, there's a, if it changes when you wear it, especially focusing during inhalation. When you feel a leak, Oh yeah, I got one like right here on this mask. Now you can do things like tighten the ear loops. These aren't adjustable. A lot of masks do, and we'll talk about that, but you can tighten ear loops. You can adjust the nose wire, but you may have to just say, oh, that mask doesn't fit me and I'll have to try a different mask. It's hard to do. I, I, can, I can do it with my son down. He's, he's five and a half and I've been able to do that down to about you know five, maybe four and a half. It's getting that limit. You know, three and a half year olds, it's just gonna be really hard to do that. So you just, you can use visual cues too. What you wanna look for is making sure it's touching your face. You don't have a big gap on the side. You know, if you see big giant gaps and you can see someone's into the mask through the gap, it ain't fitting so well. So parents can do that as well. Um, one of the questions I always get is how long can these be worn? I have some test data that shows that you can wear them 40 hours in an indoor environment. For kids, that's gonna be a little tough for 40 hours, mostly because I think soiling, mechanical damage, some smash and squash and throwing the backpack is gonna be the bigger issue. I'm budgeting two masks a week. Uh, I didn't really talk about cost, but they're not really expensive. Prices range from anywhere from like, you can get them for less than a dollar a mask up to a couple bucks if you go with the fancy printed ones, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but in general, 40 hours, the filtration media is still really rock solid. Uh, so I think mechanical damage is gonna be, and, and soiling and getting them dirty is gonna be the bigger issue. So I'm I'm planning for two a week. If I update that, then maybe uh, follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Uh, adjustable ear loops, some masks have them. Uh, I don't have a perfect example here, but let's use these ones. This is an example of adjustable ear loop option that came from this cane bifold. Sometimes they'll have these little adjusters on the end. I have yes or no in there. They're kind of nice to have adjustable ear loops. It does allow the fit to be a little bit more adjustable, but if you don't have adjustable ear loops, like in this mask, it's also easy just to tie a knot with your finger to shorten it. You can also buy cord locks and there's lots of other things that people have been using, but you can also just tie them with your finger. So there's lots of hacks to adjust an ear loop. So adjustable ear loops to me aren't make or break. Now, I'm gonna show you just a couple cool masks that I think just to jazz you up about masks. So of course, this, remember the silver test port added by me, that's this is the actual mask that's tested and so I have to connect the tubing to it. So we're starting to see printed masks. These are really cool, this boat, this Posh KF94. It's printed, it's cool. It actually has the option for adjustable ear loops. There's a tiny little slit on the bottom, but for my big head uh, with kid ear loops, I obviously could not use that. Um, so. The printed stuff's really cool. We have colors, you know, like Lutima. This is a US made mask manufacturer. And I'm 90% sure that Vita and Little Lives PPE are just buying these as well. So if you want to save a few bucks, you can just go straight to the source. And you know, the cool colors and stuff like that. Um, and there's also uh, what I think is really fun, which is I, I and you see us an example, but these are like the world's tiniest, you know, mask. So I have the, this very tiny toddler KF94. Oh, it's a little baby mask. Uh, and I think it's awesome that there's a mask standard out there that can go all the way down to toddlers. That's why we need this in the US. Uh, so this is a little tiny toddler mask on a big adult. Um, and, you know, it's kind of nice to be able to have, like, really good protection. Again, the fit, you can get it. Um, but in, and this, this one does not, oh, no, this does have adjustable ear loops. It has a little slit you can slide through. It's on the packaging. And there's also, look, I was just for novelty, a tiny little baby KN95. You know, I'll wear it. And I did, like, oh, look at a little baby KN95. You know, it's kind of fun that, you know, we can get masks all the way down to that size. So that's awesome, in my opinion. Uh, the question I also get asked the most is what mask would your son be wearing to school and my son will be wearing and i had it sitting here but i think it fell on the floor so i'm trying to go fast oh i don't know what happened to it i might have to edit oh where's my tiger mask? oh here it is ah i'm stupid all right sorry i wasted 20 seconds of your life all right tiger mask he's gonna wear this one to school it's one that we found early in the pandemic he really likes it it fits him great 
That's what he likes. I've tried other masks for him. He says, nah, I don't want that. I want tiger masks. So that's what he's wearing. Uh, I think that or uh, the ducky masks are also a good option too. Uh, but again, just look at the table. Find ones that work for you. Focus on comfort, all day comfort. All of these are highly protective. So in the end of the day, that's kind of important. And the one question that I'm going to get the most from everyone, I know it, because they're going to see this mask and they're like, what's that? The Save Wu Ultra. It is not KF94. I said KF94 like rated. Uh, they are in Hong Kong, so they're not doing KF94 because they're not in South Korea and they're not in... Um, Okay, well, that's going to get into a geopolitical discussion, but they can apply KN95 standard, but they're Hong Kong. So, you know, you know, you know, there's, some, there's some stuff there. Anyways, uh, this is the Save Wu Ultra. This is a small, they also make a kid's version. It's the same size here, but they, I, and I'm waiting for it to come. I just haven't got it yet. The, the, the seaming is a little tighter here, so it can fit a little tighter to your cheeks. Um, seemed like a really cool mask. Pressure up on these masks are amazing. 0.21 is one of the lowest I've tested. All of these Save Wu Ultras are amazing. I've been using them myself a lot. I know a lot of people are going to ask about these. They're tough to get. They don't have a ton of U.S. distributorship, so you're going to have to either go to Save, email them and ask them, and you have to order kind of a lot of masks and have them shipped. Um, so that kind of sucks. There's also some, uh, if you're in the U.S., there's, of course, some companies that import through Hong Kong, uh, and those mask companies um, are Miko Place and some, uh, I'll have a link for them, and there's a link in the sourcing uh, to the far right side, which we'll talk about next, uh, and you can get them there. But they are kind of hard to get, but they are really nice, and the ear loops are super comfy and squishy. They're really nice, uh, but they are sometimes a little long, and they're not adjustable. But I know people are going to ask me about it. I put it in there because they're, you know, they're just a really good mask. If I'm going to talk about finding the best mask, I mean, we're getting pretty close, and this thing is crazy breathable. It's like almost wearing no mask at all. Okay, last thing to talk about sourcing. Go all the way to the right-hand side. There's a sourcing column where you can get them from. Now, you're like, what the heck, Aaron? I'm going to a Korean beauty store to buy masks or some place in Hong Kong that sells ramen noodles, too. I, you know, it makes no sense. Trust me. I'm in the same boat as you. It's ridiculous. We don't have a mask standard, but why? Do we see them there? It's The simple answer is that those companies were importing Korean beauty products. What else is in a pharmacy when I told you? Well, Korean beauty products and KF94. So they had an angle to get KF94. And if you know that KF94 is coming straight out of South Korea, I have literally zero concern. I've tested like 100 of them. They've all been excellent. I am not concerned at all. But that means that companies that are selling Korean beauty products also could line up with the KF94s. So Be Healthy uh, USA, uh, as well as uh, Collect USA, all these have like, you know, that's what they were selling before. They pivoted to mass. They import straight from South Korea. I've tested a ton of masks from them and they're good. Can you go to Amazon? Uh, here's the issue with Amazon. I would definitely avoid KN95s off of Amazon. Ambrus uh, USA, who Lloyd Ambrus, who is, makes a great mask company and has a great surgical mask. If you're looking for some good surgical masks, uh, um, uh, started testing them, found tons of fakes, and that's because Amazon doesn't screen. There's no, re again, there's no regulation to it, right? We don't have a regulatory agency to it. Can you buy KF94s on Amazon? There could be fakes. I, I haven't dug, dug around to it. I've heard from South Korea that Chinese companies were making fakes and selling them into South Korea, so it could possibly they come through Amazon. But if you're buying the same brands here, I don't know. I know supplies are super tight. Normally, I would say stay the heck off of Amazon. But as a parent, I get that they might be sold out and these three companies aren't going to supply the whole U.S. So uh, there's some risk to it. Of course, I'm going to, at some point in time, upload pictures so you can compare the packaging. But again, packaging has changed over time. Uh, masks can change over time as they change the patterning. So uh, it's not a perfect system. I get it. I'm, I'm like you. I'm a little frustrated that we don't have more better masks and we don't have a mask standard. And, and the U.S. is way behind. Go to South Korea, man. They're knocking it out of the park. Go to Hong Kong. They're making some of the best masks in the world. Where are we? Okay, so thank you very much. I try to make this as short as possible because I know parents are out there don't have a ton of time. If you have any questions, throw them in the comments below. Uh, last comment. Aaron, I bought the mask. You said it was for two and four and it didn't freaking fit, you a-hole. But uh, great. Be, use that anger, go to the comments, tell me what mask did not fit, and also please tell me what mask did fit. We can crowdsource this to help parents find better masks. So throw your mask options in the comments section below about what did fit your kid, what didn't fit your kid, and we can get some information. I'm gonna guess it covers a huge range because two-year-olds and five-year-olds sometimes have very same size faces because human development. Um, as usual, you can like and subscribe if you want. If it's a bike video, the pandemic's over. I almost released a bike video. I was like, ah, I better not. And then, yeah, I got lucky because pandemic's apparently not over. Uh, you can always uh, subscribe to me on Twitter and Instagram at The Mass Nerd. I do post mostly on Twitter if you're asking for questions and stuff like that. I try to answer them all I can. I'm going to be on vacation for a couple weeks, so I'll be radio silence, but I want to get this video up before I could. So thanks, everyone, for hanging around, and have yourself a great day.